Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to ride. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to another episode of An Atheist Gets Mad. I'm your host, Aaron Sharp, and today we're going to be continuing our examination of Islam with another, some would say, controversial guest. If you remember last time, we had a friend of mine named No More Dogma, who would be considered, I suppose, an anti-SJW, and today we have Christy Winters, who many would call you an SJW. Would you say that that's correct, Christy? I have been called an SJW, yes. Yeah, but you don't prefer that term. I uh, am to understand that you actually pres- uh, prefer the term progressive activist. Yeah, I definitely would say that, yeah. And uh, today we're going to be uh, watching a few videos again from the Love Alla 328 channel. Um, today we're going to be starting off with relationship advice for women, which is going to be, a, I think, very interesting topic to talk about. And uh, so with that being said, let's get right into this. So loving advice to those who, who want to look sexy, but still want to wear hijab. Can we pause it there? Because <laughs> that seems weird to me. I love how we're not even seven seconds in and we already have problems with this. <laughs> like, and so you, you, isn't that a contradiction, though? I mean, the whole point of being covered is that so you don't appear sexy. Yeah, exactly. No, no shit. <laughs> and the other thing too is it's like, remember, this is loving advice. We're, we're, we're telling you this lovingly. Don't show yourself. Just, do, just don't, don't show your hair. Don't show your face. Just don't show any of that stuff. And, 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 but, but we, we love you. We love you. We think you're beautiful. Don't show us love. Yeah, don't show us anything, but just think you're sexy and feel sexy inside, but don't do anything about it and don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that's forced down your throat from Glee to Gilmore Girls. You have to look hot, but you still have to draw your veil. Do, do they have a lot of veiled people on Glee and the Gilmore Girls? <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that episode. I, you know what? I don't watch a whole lot of Glee. Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume no. I'm, I, I think I'm going to say no. <laughs> I mean, there might be characters, but, you know, this whole like, oh, it's the Muslim girl. And, oh, she could, I want to make her look so hot, but she also has to draw her veil. So, ooh, yeah. no, I don't remember that being a lot of the plot points or the song inspirations. Yeah, and the other thing too is that the, the, the thing about uh, Gilmore Girls or Glee or any of these other shows is they're Western shows. They're not Middle Eastern shows. They're nothing like that. So the idea of having all of the girls wearing hijabs or wearing uh, uh, non-revealing clothing and stuff like that, kind of ridiculous because they're under a completely different cultural, uh, they're under completely different cultural standards than they would be in the Middle East or any other place like that. So the idea of showing skin or showing your hair and stuff like that, that's not a problem here. That's a problem there. Yeah. Right. So. First to the girls who, or to the people who don't dress modestly, this could be guys or girls who make excuses and say, I have a clean heart for them. It's my suggestion. It's my thought and a caring word. Don't make excuses for what someone else is doing incorrectly. What I say is try it. It just seems like sentence fragments. I, I think in his head they make sense together. <laughs> but I don't understand how you get from, I don't have to cover myself because I have a clean heart. Like, what? Are, how do those two things go together? I guess, you know, if you're pure inside, you don't have to be pure outside. But I don't know. It just doesn't, yeah, like that's disconnected. And then this whole thing about, you know, don't make excuses for what someone else is doing incorrectly. What I say, just try it. Is he the one doing the thing incorrect? I don't know. It just mm. seems like there's a lot of sentence fragments going on that's hard to follow his thinking here. I gave an example and it shattered a lot of people's comfort levels. But you know the whole Trayvon Hood thing? People are wearing hoods. A congressman wore a hood in, in the assembly and was asked to, be, uh, to leave. I encourage young people who need uh, the push. Okay. Um... The Trayvon Hood thing isn't exactly a a religious based no. uh, ideology that forces you to wear a hood. That was in solidarity because a child got shot. That was in, it, it was in solidarity. It had nothing to do with a religious belief. Nothing at all. And I'm apples and oranges are coming to mind. Mm. Like hoodies and hijabs, they're not the same. 
there's no parallels to be made here. I mean, like, hey, check it out. Like, if you want to wear a hijab and it has no religious uh, cultural connotation, anything like that, and you just want to wear it because it's cool, fine. Then it's basically the same as a hoodie. But the fact that people are being forced to wear these things, that's the difference. The difference is somebody wanted to wear that hoodie in the uh, wherever it was in con Congress or whatever. Um, but then people in the Middle East and some people here are forced by the laws, forced by the culture or forced by their parents to wear these kinds of clothing uh, to appease some kind of mythical sky daddy that you apparently think exists. So, yeah, it's not the same thing. Don't do it for Trayvon, but... Put a hijab or dress modestly, stop wearing such tight clothing. And when someone says, hey, you look different, it's like, hey, trying to represent. What? You can make up a... <laughs> what? <laughs> I almost spit on my coffee. Some... Don't wear your hijab for Trayvon. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I see a bunch of, you know, women in hijabs, like, you know, just like tapping their hearts and going, Trayvon, man. Like, I don't, I don't see it, like pouring out their coffee the for their hood. Yeah, yes. <laughs> no, these, again, apples and oranges. Just because his head was covered doesn't mean it's the same thing as... Wearing a hijab. Oh, this is very, very interesting. <laughs> and when someone says, hey, you look different, it's like, hey, I'm trying to represent. You could make up a funny excuse. <laughs> as it is. It's, it's like an analogy. <laughs> what are you trying to represent in that case? Oh, <laughs> Just... I don't know. He's going he's gonna to crack open a bottle of like vintage Marlowe and pour a little bit on the ground for his homies. I know. I feel like he's just done a marathon of like bad boys and a whole bunch, like you know, and he's gotten all the lingo, but doesn't really get the concepts. It doesn't uh, understand why it doesn't really work when he uses the the terms in the way he's using them. This is for my boy Muhammad. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Be like, oh, it's like the Trayvon thing. I'm just trying to dress confidently. This gives us an excuse to get around. Because Sorry. You had nothing to do with dressing confidently. No. No. Oh my god, he was going out to buy fucking snacks. He went yep. to buy snacks, he was wearing a hoodie. You know, okay, imagine this. You want to go outside to the store, so then you put a fucking jacket on that has a hood. And then you go and you buy the fucking snacks. It wasn't anything to do with goddamn fucking... Ah. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. No, I have the same sentiment. Even the... Ah. <laughs> yes, that part especially. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. We worry about what people say. The last uh, and most important thing is, I mean this with all due respect to my to my sisters, I don't grow up uh, knowing that it, it's, I'm not growing up saying that it's easy to wear hijab in America, but I am saying this much. If you're going to put the cloak on your head, then match the part. Yes, like, but the, the thing is, though, is that um, Muslims aren't necessarily the only people that wear head coverings, right? Jewish people do this, like uh, some very fundamentalist cre uh, Christian uh, women do this, uh, stuff like that. So it, it's not necessarily like Muslims are the only ones that do it. And America has, I don't know if you realize this, a lot of uh, people there that tend to cover their heads for religious reasons. It, it has nothing to do with, it's not a hard thing to do. All you're doing is wearing a, a headscarf, right? Yeah. But, but I, I would assume that he would mostly be talking about the negative stereotypes that come about from people wearing these kinds of headdresses. And in particular, what he seems to be saying is that, look, women, you have an extra duty. And not only do you have to dress modestly, but you have to act modestly. So you have to be perfect. Men, we can get away with stuff. We can walk around with our hair uncovered. And that's fine. But, you know, it really sucks. But for you, it's just harder. And you're going to, you know, and so represent <laughs> I guess is the message without even questioning why would you tolerate that level of unfairness when you can change it by changing your attitude and I, I have to say I don't know what he says about matching the part I guess he's going to set it up now but it is a sort of the yeah, inside outside um, that you have to uh, have an extra level of purity and demands on you to, to if you're a woman because people can see immediately because you have the hijab on or however you're covering they're going to associate those articles with your faith so yeah i mean they do have they're more of an ambassador than men are who can blend who can kind of get away with being seen as secular because you can't see your faith unless you wear it on your head or on your body and so that's what women are doing and again yeah that's just a, it's really super uh, unequal it's not no i don't i don't think it's fair either but my question is like um 
what about the moderates, right? What about moderate Muslims who uh, don't believe that you shouldn't have to wear skin or sorry, that you shouldn't have to wear completely loose clothing? Maybe some of them believe that you should be able to wear slightly tighter clothing. Like the, the thing is, is that there are moderates that exist in every religion. And to sit there and say that they're not any more uh, involved in that religion than the other people is just a no true Scotsman fallacy. That's all that it is. You're, you're setting up a standard for these people to uh, have their faith based on when really people are going to interpret those passages, interpret those books in a very, very different way. Every single person that interprets that book is going to interpret it differently than another person. That's just the way that human nature works. And I, I think I said this in, in uh, the last video is that if you want to know what's uh, wrong with the first um, uh, uh, with the with the first church of Christ, you need no go no further than the second church of Christ. Everybody has a different interpretation of their religion. So to sit there and say that, oh, these people are not Muslims or these people are, are uh, not Christians or not Jewish because they do this particular thing or they don't do this particular thing. No. That's bullshit. They're just as much Muslim or Christian or Jewish or whatever as the other person is. You're just creating this fallacy where somebody has to uh, uh, go by your standards. Well, you know what? Maybe they don't give a fuck about your standards. Maybe they have completely different standards. There was a campaign in Iran a few months ago where men were putting head coverings on their heads because the law had been changed or the government was enforcing head coverings for women and their husbands were like wanted to do something to say this is wrong. I think it's unfair on her. So to show solidarity, they would put the head covering on themselves and take a selfie with themselves and their wives. Oh, really? To show so yeah. And so there are. You know, we tend to think of the Muslim world as a big lumpy, you know, thing of of homogeneity, when really there's quite a lot of variation. So you know, women in Iran have very different experiences from women in Saudi Arabia who have different experiences from women in Kuwait or um, Iraq. So yeah, we're, there's a lot of opportunity to see moderates and to make connections with people who want to reform the more radical aspects of or the more medieval aspects of their faith. Oh my god, yes, absolutely. And oh, that that's and it's the most obvious fucking thing in the world, clearly. People are different. Shocker. <laughs> if I'm going to wear a baseball cap sideways covering one eyebrow and I have a chain, I ain't going to walk around with in a suit with a handkerchief, right? <laughs> I'm going to play the part. Um no, because I'm pretty sure that I would be fine wearing a sideways hat, a chain, and a fucking suit. You know what? Dress how you want. I don't fucking care. Who cares if you're wearing a suit or not? You wear, wear a fucking tie with fucking no shirt on and a pair of border shorts. I don't care what you're wearing. It doesn't matter. We don't have fashion police. Yeah. It's, oh my God. No shit. And the idea that you have fashion police in your culture is really fucking weird and foreign and you wonder why a lot of people and you're saying before oh well it's hard to wear a hijab in america and stuff like that yeah i can understand why a lot of people would be confused about that kind of thing because we're not imposing those kinds of laws on people we're not imposing those kinds of belief structures so if you're choosing to make this affectionate connection with your creator that this is yours you look to your creator and say, this is yours i'm gonna cover it and when what, 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 what affectionate connection are we having with our creator because we get dressed? <laughs> Surely he can see us naked if he exists. So what does it matter what clothes we put on? He could always see our bits. That's true. Oh, man, that's really true. You got to think about it. Like uh, uh, Allah, he's got like x-ray specs. He can see everything that's going on down there. <laughs> like it's just like yeah, like just Allah sitting on a beach going, I see all naked people. <laughs> Doesn't Allah live on like the moon or something? I have no proof oh, that, that I like know. I don't I don't think that they actually say that, but he lives up in the sky somewhere. So I'm pretty sure he's looking down on everybody and being like, Yeah, you know what? Hey, those twigging giggleberries that fucking Joe has over there, <laughs> not bad. He's packing. I like it. I uh, some some grade A work I think I've done there. Grade A. Yes, that's a really good one. That one could use some work. That one, oh, look, that's cute. Um. <laughs> I just made that one as a joke. I don't think anybody's yeah. gonna understand what's going on there. <laughs> that poor guy, he's never gonna get laid. <laughs> Yeah, but seriously, it doesn't matter to God what kind of clothes you wear, because presumably you're not really wearing clothes for an omniscient, omnipotent being. You're doing it so that you don't get, so that men don't have to have the discomfort of having a sexual thought and then pushing it from their mind. 
Right. That's the real problem that the centers around this is that we don't want to inconvenience people with sexual thoughts and these people are disproportionately, you know, men. So women are the ones who are being covered in this, you know, because of the way that power system works and the way that men hold power uh, historically, you know. But um yeah, this is it's really about baby proofing the world to prevent in particular men from having sexual thoughts. That's why women have to go through all this. Well, and the question is how low Seriously, how low do you actually think of men that they can't look at a girl who's wearing a clothing that shows her fucking wrist or ankle and they can't help themselves but to jump on that? How how low do you actually think of people that way? And also, how low do you fucking think of women that they're going out showing their wrist or ankle and immediately assuming that they want to fuck? That does they are not DTF just because they show a wrist or ankle. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Very and I just have to say, so I'm I'm straight, but there have been women who, when they've walked in, I've been like, wow, that's that's some amazing cleavage. That's that's impressive. I'm distracted. I'm a straight woman, and I'm seriously <laughs> distracted, and I have to practice talking to their eyes. So I know that there's got to be an effort. And and to be honest, like the the first time it really happened to me, where I got really distracted by somebody by a woman's cleavage. I just and it was actually in a classroom setting, and the guy I was watching the eyes of the professor because once I noticed, I'm like, he's gonna look. Never looked, and my, my respect for him went up so much because it was only you know a little bit lower than he had to drop his eyes. Never did. Kept him constant. I'm like, that is honor. That is self control. That is respect. That and is serious self control. Or yeah. his peripheral vision game is just on point. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just stare right into her eyes. No, I'm looking in your eyes, but I'm really looking below your eyes. Um, uh, now look, we... <laughs> look what we've become. Now we're talking about men like they can't help but look at women. <laughs> well, no, I was saying I was relating. I was empathizing here, you know, for a, a moment. But um, yeah. So, but it can be done. You know, it definitely can be done. We shouldn't, yeah, think the worst of men or or treat all men um, or assume that all men would be the worst thing that men can be. And we have some respect, have some ability to see people's potential and honor that potential. And we have, I think, as Western societies especially, have given men an opportunity to, through feminism, um, to have, instead of housewives that they're married to, to have partners who are equal who can help them and understand them in ways that 150 years ago, couples probably couldn't. So um, yes, it, we can think better of men because men can be better. They are better than what religion reduces them to. Sure. Yeah, no, I I, I would agree uh, with most of that. I, I would uh, ask, do you think that it's because um, of feminism or do you think that it's more or less just human nature that people don't want to be total pricks? And if you have a friend that's a girl, you don't really want to be objectifying her in that way because that would be rude. Well, I see that as like an exercise. So men, so let's say men in uh, Saudi Arabia don't have to practice any self-control or learn how to look a woman in the eye and not only focus on her body to set that aside for another time or to have a sly glance when she's not looking so that she doesn't feel uncomfortable, but obviously you look. Because um, everybody looks. You just have to look when they're not looking. You don't want to make someone else feel uncomfortable. That's, That's viral, why God anyway. invented sunglasses. Yes. <laughs> right? um, so you need the opportunity to practice the skills. Sure, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that comes with fem feminism because women would enter a new space and then they would would, there would be boundaries pushed and people had to learn to adapt. It's evolution. Uh, when you're talking about this, are you talking about pop feminism? I mean, the kind of feminism that we see on Tumblr and stuff like that? Um, or what, what do you I'm mean when historical. you say fem feminism? So I'm thinking historical feminism. So the idea that women could ever be in a voting booth was a radical idea a hundred years ago. But women had to agitate and men who supported them agitated with them. And then suddenly there were pink ballots and blue ballots. Well, that became illegal because they were differentiating on sex. And women began to vote and then women began running for offices. And But there were no women's toilets in the House or the Senate. Really? So they were never... Oh, yeah. Women only got their own toilets in the House, I think, in the late 90s. And in the Senate in the, st in the like, last decade. Yeah. You're fucking kidding me in the 90s? That's insane. But you know what that reminds me of? Yeah, well, 
Oh, well, the the, the uh, blue and pink ballots, I've never heard of that before, but it reminds me a lot of the the three-fifths uh, deal. I don't know if women had a lesser vote or anything like that, but it's uh, this uh, stark difference between the uh, regular vote and then whoever we decided to kind of let vote afterwards kind of deal. It's like a stark difference. You can kind of, you can see the line that's being drawn there. These people are regular Americans. They have all the rights and freedoms as everybody uh, should have. And these are the others that we're kind of letting into our group. Hmm. Seems kind of odd to me. So yeah, you're not talking about pop feminism, the kind of thing you'll find on Tumblr. You're talking about historical feminism where the where feminists and uh, women worked towards uh, gaining equal rights and freedoms the same as everybody should have. Yeah, exactly. Coming okay. into whether it's politics or the economic sphere, having their own jobs and not just being the secretary, but, you know, actually coming into spaces like becoming doctors and lawyers, um, all that kind of stuff. Women had to do it before men had to deal with women in those situations. Hmm. So. Yeah. And, and you know what? I agree with that, uh, that idea of feminism. I can't per personally say that I agree with the uh, typical thing, you know, that everybody says the Tumblr feminists who get upset about all kinds of different things and the word triggered and all this kind of stuff. I don't agree with that. I think that that's very, very silly and damaging. But at the same time, there is a different faction as far as I'm concerned, where people are actually talking about cultural significances and they're talking about uh, gender equality and stuff like that. So I, I think that there is a difference there. I think that personally, the word feminist should have never been commandeered and used in the way that the Tumblr feminists are using it. But hey, that's the English language is a living, evolving thing. So we're going to have to you know, deal my with solution to that is I don't go on Tumblr. <laughs> That's it. I, I've never interacted with a Tumblr feminist because I've never gone on Tumblr. Really? I just go to like the National Organization of Women or the Planned Parenthood Action Fund or other groups that advance women's interests or we have a focus on it because it's something I care about. Um, so, yeah, I've never kind of interacted with any of these people. I think mostly because I haven't gone looking for them. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. When you allow me to meet someone that I love, then I will share that with them. So that's my advice to everyone at home having that trouble. Take the leap, try it, and keep your intention for God. And please um, try to make modesty something more than a cloth on your head. And we all know what that means. So make sure that you cover yourself all the time, except for the odd time that you're going to be in the room alone with the person that you're married to. Because that doesn't create sexual repression. That, that, that's, that, I'm sure that's totally normal. I'm sure that anybody who grows up in a society like that doesn't put the pussy on a pedestal and they don't think constantly <laughs> about how they really, really, really want to get laid. I'm sure that that doesn't happen. I'm sure that the, the, the Catholic schoolgirl syndrome that happens in, in uh, 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 Western culture, I'm sure that's nowhere near what happens in Islam, right? I just want to say that this, this idea that women should cover themselves to everyone except the, the husband that they're going to be wedded to, and he and only he is the person for whom they should take that covering off. Because you know what? Nobody owns my body. My body does not belong to anyone. It is not his right to see me in a way that nobody else sees me. That is all bullshit. And that's what it's playing into here. It's this idea that you're special. You're precious, right? And so, like, you're, you're a diamond. And you're if we a prize. Flash, yeah. If we flash you around, people will want to steal you and have you for themselves. So if you cover yourself up, then I don't have to, like, then you do the work of covering up your diamond, and then only I get to see your diamond because it belongs to me. That's seriously messed up. It's not romantic. It's... It's a power relationship that's based on one person's ownership of somebody else. Uh, yeah, I, I was just about to say the exact same thing. It's the uh, it's the idea as people as property, and that is fucking wrong. People yeah, are not I mean, property. And uh, and the other thing too is that if you ever noticed uh, somebody that just gets an engagement ring, everybody wants to see that diamond. So you <laughs> yes. know what? If you got a guy, if you got a beautiful diamond, show it off. That's all I'm saying. If you want to, if you want to, if you don't want to, then don't, right? That That's up to you, but it's not, it should not be left up to somebody else. Who cares if they're your husband or, or your uh, parents or your fucking God, I don't care about any of that kind of stuff. All right. Do you, you do you. And then after that, who gives a fuck what anybody else thinks?
There's also, I think, you know, I, I, I know that I've heard people say that women find the covering liberating because then you have to, they feel like you're, they're treating, they're dealing with you as a person, not you as a woman in a woman's body. But I think part of the problem of that disassociation is that you think that you can't be a woman in a woman's body and still be treated with respect. So it's not the, pro the covering isn't protecting you. It's, it's really not. It's, it's a barrier between you and other people that feeds off of a fear and a distance. And what's really comfortable is when you walk outside with your face the way you want it to look, your hair the way you want it to look, and clothes you either feel good about or you don't give a crap about because it's Saturday, you're just running to the grocery store, and you don't care who you run into, and you just walk outside and you're a person. You're just a person in a woman's body or a man's body or a trans body or whatever else, but you're a person first and you see other people. That's what we should all feel comfortable going out of our house doing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, here's the thing. Like I realize men and women have differences, right? Guys don't typically have boobs. Sometimes they do. And you know what? Sometimes that's great. But typically guys don't have the same body structure as a woman. Does that mean that women should be treated differently than a man? No, of course we should accept our differences. We should understand that we have those differences.